Suburbia is a 1983 drama directed by Penelope Spheris. This film starts out uh, where well, you start with a hitchhiker on the side of the road and she it was picked up by a woman and a few minutes down the road they get a flat tyre and they go off to a phone booth to you know, get some help and while she's on the phone her child gets mauled and attacked by some wild dogs. And It's an uplifting start to a film. Actually. It's a very uplifting start to a film. <laughs> But then from there you meet another runaway, this, this time a young lad, which is about a 15-year-old, and he's just running away from home because his mother's an alcoholic. And he goes off and he joins a group of kind of suburban punk runaways. Uh, he meets them, he first meets them in a, in a club um, with a band, uh, the band DI are playing. Um, and he goes off with this group that kind of, well, he, he, he gets, uh, someone spikes his, his drink with some drugs and... This other guy picks him up and takes him back to their crash. Uh, it's like a house, uh, it's, you know, it's like a run-down house that's, that's disused. And uh, he joins in with this, this bunch of merry men, mm. or punks, as they are in this film. They've all run away from home and, you know, they basically thieve their food, um, you know, to survive. And they're not really, you know, apart from stealing the obit food... not really bothering anybody particularly. Not really, no. Uh, but obviously the local... People don't really like having them there. Um, and, yeah, they've got all these wild dogs living around the house, um, which... I mean, it's... So, yeah, so it was directed by Penelope Spheris, who is, is mostly known because she made the two documentaries... Well, I think there's three documentaries, uh, The Decline of Western Civilization. Um, she did the, the Punk Years and the Metal Years, and I think there was another one which was either another metal or another... I can't remember. Um, and she also made Wayne's World... Uh, in the in the early nineties, but I uh, you know this is it's probably quite unknown this film to maybe people in Britain. Um, it's a Roger Corman movie, which is why there are scenes of extreme. And I found an interview with Penelope Spheris, and she says that there are certain scenes in the film she didn't want to have in a scene. Mm. Particularly, there's that quite unnerving scene where, where at in the mush pit when the woman gets oh, yeah, attacked yeah, yeah. and stripped, which is not very nice no. to, to watch. But apparently. In a Roger Corman movie, he insists that every ten minutes you have a scene of either sex or violence, <laughs> because he's an exploitation filmmaker. Um, but these, you know, they she apparently that that was a, something she'd heard had actually happened. Mm-hmm. Um, I find this I, I find this film quite interesting actually because it's kind of a, a split between. I've read lots of accounts or reviews by ex punks, some who don't like it because it doesn't depict how they were when they were younger, and others who. Who do so obviously you know people grow up in different situations and live their lives in their own ways and some might take from it whereas others don't. Um, I think there's lots of interesting stuff in there. It's not perfect by any means. It was I think she wanted to make a documentary about the punks. Or she, she did make a punk documentary about the punk scene, but at this point documentaries weren't they weren't shown anywhere. No. So she decided to kind of put the fiction yeah. element into it. Although, you know, they go to this club quite a few times and every time yeah, there's, there's a different every, there's band a, playing yeah. there's a real band. Exactly. So, yes, you have DI and there's TSOL and the Vandals and they each obviously... And those performances are filmed kind of like... Well, we documentaries, but kind of... Like, if, if you watch any... I mean, I, I, don't know when, I don't know when those kind of MTV generation really kicked off, mm. but, you know, it's... A little bit after that. Any, thing, any, like, those kind of gigs that you see nowadays, it's, you know, it's kind of filmed in that with a lot of camera work on the actual stage, mm. and obviously the bands are breaking the fourth wall <laughs> much of the time. Um, but there's some great performances by those bands, if, if you know and like those bands. Um, most of the cast were non-actors, in fact, all of them, I think, were non-actors. Um, there's there's two quite... Well, there's one guy, Chris Pedersen, who turned up a few years later as Bunker in Point Break. Mm-hmm. And then he was got Flea, obviously. Yeah. This is just before he joined... The, he may have been in the Chili Peppers at the time, but this was... Right at the start. Of right at the start. This film was 83, and I think the first Chili Peppers album was 85. So this is just before mm. the Chili Peppers kind of, you know, came along. Uh, he spends a lot of time with a rat yes. in this film. And doing strange things with the rat. He's <laughs> clearly, clearly an oddball uh, that he always has been. I, I've seen this a few times. I, I, I really like this film. I think it's you know obviously I've I've grown up listening to that kind of music. So I, I you know, and I like films about you say depressing people. I well, say real people, miserable people in miserable situations that have well, miserable things happen to them. Some people have no choice but <laughs> well, to be in true. miserable situations. I think you know it's yeah. The, 
there's some enjoyable characters in there, and yeah, and the the story. Uh, I mean, it's about. I mean, it's you know, it's a, it's about it's about something that's probably still relevant. To, it is relevant. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're basically unwanted, it's unwanted they? kids. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, f- come from families from I don't know, drug abuse or alcohol or people out of work, and you know, people losing their jobs. Mm. And then also, I mean, there's a lot of obviously it's called suburbia. There's a line at the very beginning of the film when the, when this kid runs away from home, he's reading his mum his mum's diary, and she says, kind of back before she had her children, that they wanted to move to the to, to suburbia because suburbia was like it was a cross between the suburbs and utopia. Mm. So they have all these you know visions of what what it'll be like to live in these places, and of course life takes over and yeah, yeah. shit happens and and. You put it all on your I mean, kids. It, you know, it kind of shines a light on the fact that a lot of the, the you know, the grown ups, you know, are hypocrites and you know, yeah. they're just as bad they're as just the, as bad. Or they're worse than the kids, you know. They they say, Oh do you know, don't do that, but they're just, you know, just worse. You know, you've got one of the characters whose father abused her, you know, when she was a child and you know, but he you know, he's he doesn't ever get into trouble for that and you know, the the kids are made out as the as the bad guys Not at um, all. by society. Yeah. So Yeah. And obviously I suppose in a way, you know, it's a, it's a world that's maybe our views on things are different nowadays mm. and hope I mean these things do still go on but you know it's that's why I think these films are good because they shine a light on things yeah. that you know obviously were that was still you know that was it's not a new thing it's is it? not it's a new thing then no exactly it's just told in a different way because mm. obviously there's the emergence of the punk scene which obviously comes into it as, as well which gives you some you know there's some, there's some great well, like I said there's those those bands there is a score I, I really like the score the score was done by Alex Gibson he was in a, a band originally called Little Cripples which featured the uh, Michael Jira, who is the vocalist from Swans. Uh, so he's he's got you know he's got time doing punk actual punk music and stuff. Uh, he's done a few other things, but uh, I, I quite like this. It's kind of a, a, a punk post punk type mm. type sound to the to the music, which I, I really like. Um, and then yeah, I mean if you, if you like films like you know the Repo Man and Gummo maybe River's Edge things like that and also Over the Edge have you seen, ever seen Over the Edge? no I haven't no that's a really really great film I saw it a few weeks a couple of months ago actually I was quite bowled over by it uh, with Matt Dillon and again you know kind of kids runaways mm. that you know hate their parents as we all do when we're 14 <laughs> but uh, some more than others <laughs> but uh, but you, you, you quite liked it you, oh, liked, I enjoyed you preferred it. it to Metal Skin yeah I thought, I thought it was quite similar did. to Metal Skin uh, yeah. you know theme wise but but you know I yeah it moved at a brisker pace than the Metal Skin did for me So and you uh, like the Chili Peppers and I do like the Chili Peppers so the yeah. Fleers there yeah. which is a good thing but uh, great and it's it is available uh, you can get the DVD. Uh, I think Shout Factory released it a few years ago. Yeah, two thousand ten. Roger, I think Roger Corman collection. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that can be picked up. I don't think there's a release in the UK. Um, I don't think it's of. ever been released. No. Here. So that was Suburbia. If you uh, enjoyed this video or you've seen the film and you want to let us know, uh, drop us a comment uh, below. Uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, give us a like. All that stuff. Yeah. Check us out. We're on Facebook. We don't do much on Facebook. We're on Twitter as well. Mm-hmm. We're a bit active on there. Yep. More active. Uh, you can come and see us there. Or, yeah. And check out some of our other videos. Do that. And uh, we'll be back next time for another one. Yep. We'll see you then.